Welcome to Follow Your Joy podcast, where intuition is the doorway to your elevated creativity, more joy, and prosperity. I'm your host, Marla Diane, and I've been living an intuitive life for decades as a creative. That translates to transforming creative entrepreneurs' lives for over 27 years through two businesses as a business strategist and a life designer. And prior to that, an entertainment publicist and talent manager. Follow Your Joy is an entrepreneurial resource for creatives sharing their challenge to victory stories through the lens of listening to their intuition. It's time to make joy your inner GPS for life and business decisions rather than lean on your logic and reason first. You'll not only be following what is most authentic for you, but you will live the beautiful life meant just for you. Want to learn how to access, trust, or up-level your intuition? Join me in the conversation to find out how. Well, good day or evening, wherever you are uh, in the world, and I'm grateful to be here with you. So my guest today um, hmm, was uh, is quite fascinating uh, and inspiring. If you combine a biology and paleontology expert with the innate love of photographing the wild <laughs> in, a, in its Yellowstone ha- habitat, you'll have Larry Taylor. So I was pretty enamored and curious um, about his photos that were displayed at his booth um, at the Travel and Adventure Show that I attended in early February, that I was intuitively led to his booth to go talk to him. I'm like, what are these photos, right? And obviously being a creative and being surrounded by a lot of creatives and many, many photographers over my years, and I love photography, I'm like, okay, beeline over there. (laughs) <laughs> and that's how I met Larry. So I think, you know, I think it's a natural curiosity to be attracted to wild animals and how they live, right? Because what I find what Larry does is he demystifies that human curiosity through the power of his photography, right? So that you get to see things that normally you're not going to see, Right. And he's known that this path of his kind of came around, believe it or not, the early age of five. He knew this, five years old. I don't know if I can say that about myself, but I definitely had the writing thing going on when I was young. So that is what following your joy and listening to your gut instincts is about, right? which he will share his intriguing story with you and how that all happened. So Larry is a biology professor, wildlife photographer, and guide. And he grew up in this in a small eastern town of Texas. And he's been fascinated right, by the natural world and natural history for as long as he could remember. So let's just say five years old. <laughs> Right. So as all as an all around biology nerd, that's his words, not mine. (laughs) He proudly um, has an undergraduate degree in physiology, a master's degree in genetics and a doctorate degree in paleontology. Wow, that's amazing. So after securing a job as a biology professor in Montana, that's when he was able to start pursuing his dream of wildlife photography in earnest. So a year following that, he chose to monetize his passion, which he will share his story about that. And today, he's grateful to have been able to blend these two passions of his right? Actually, well, I guess it's three, but it's actually two. Wildlife photography, guiding people. He has a tour you'll hear about, a photo tour, and teaching, right? How beautiful how all that works together. So I was uh, mentioning to him in our pre-call that 
he's living what I call the IntelliKey of his life, which means he's living out his purpose that was meant for him. And the IntelliKey of your life is a seed that you're born with that directs you to what I call your zone of genius and how it will impact lives. So a simple example is the IntelliKey of an acorn is a robust, strong, gorgeous oak tree, right? Within that acorn is that seed, right? Mm -hmm. Of that large oak tree that then gives to nature. So with all this, let's take you on a journey of the wild with someone who lives it and loves it. So Larry, I should say Dr. Larry Taylor, welcome to Follow Your Joy. Thank you so much, Marla. That is a very generous introduction. Uh, I really appreciate it. I think you captured me pretty well right there. Okay. You're welcome. It's look, it was so simple. It just, it, it was very, um, I love nature, right? And I think we, we talked about that. So very, very, very much simple to me. Okay. So let's, uh, let's have you share highlights of your journey um, to, you know, where you got to today. So give us, yeah, give us a little bit of background. Here. <laughs> um, <laughs> highlights of my journey would be, I, I think one thing you mentioned is I have known since I was a small child that my fascination is with the natural world. And I can't remember if I actually said this to you specifically, but when I was a little kid, there were two careers that I thought of the most. One was paleontologist and one was wildlife photographer. And I, you know, I don't think I've changed that much since I was a kid. I've, I've, I've always had a good sense of who I am and what's important to me. Mm. So quick highlights would be later in life. There was a period in time where I felt before college that, well, those things aren't realistic. I should do something else. And, you know, that was kind of people where I grew up didn't think paleontologist was realistic or anything like that. So I went to college thinking, all right, I'll study something else. Maybe I'll be uh, I'll go into medicine. That's what a lot of people kind of thought I should do. And then once I was there, it's like, no, this is, you know, my passion and interests are not in being a doctor, worrying about um, people's health or being a physical therapist or anything like that, it was just still in the natural world. So after my undergraduate degree, got that master's degree in genetics, kind of branched out from what I studied in undergrad. Of note, I don't think I told you, but when I did my master's degree, I did it in Colorado because I needed more mountains and wildness. Mm. And, and the location was very important to me. And it always has been because I, location is just yeah. so important to my peace of mind that I have access to these wild places um, that I've been fascinated with so long. Then did my PhD in paleontology, have no idea how I worked that out, but I did and was just beyond honored to be in the lab of Dr. Seth Finnegan at UC Berkeley, an incredible teacher, one of my life's great mentors truly, and took me on and allowed me to study in his lab. So, you know, I, I got my first like real, um, feel for pursuing that, that dream of paleontology. And I think anyone, if you get through your doctorate and you can honestly say you had a blast doing it, that's a great thing. And I absolutely had a blast, um, and still have a blast thinking about those issues and then teaching my students now with that background. So then uh, yes, after that, next highlight was in leaving my doctorate, I started to think, okay, what's the long term? Where do I want to be? How do I want to set up the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. And I applied to a lot of different academic jobs and had offers in several different places, largely big cities, just because that's where most jobs are. But then I got this job offer in a small town in Montana, mm -hmm. which just straight off the bat, I was like, oh man, I this is, this is calling to me. Cause I'm a small town boy. I don't, I don't do well in cities. I don't do well in traffic, mm -hmm. but having that access to these wild places was immediately just like, Oh, that feels like the one. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it kind of began to hit me that, well, it's also just a couple of hours from Yellowstone, which is one of the greatest places in the world to pursue wildlife photography. 
And it, it just seemed like that was the answer for me. I couldn't have scripted it better. Right. So I took a little bit, I felt of a gamble coming to Montana, uh, further away from very far away from anyone I know. Um, again, smaller town, college without without necessarily all the resources that a big university would have. Yeah. But man, was it the right decision. I I can't imagine my life not ending up this way because now I am a professor and absolutely love my what I do in my day to day. I I find so much meaning and fulfillment in what I do here. I mean, like every single day, even if I'm here late at night in the lab, I go home thinking, yeah, that was that was worth my worth my time. And then I also am able to pursue now for these last couple of years, this other thing that's been kind of in the back of my mind since I was a kid, wildlife photography, and now turning that into a photography business and guiding business. It's, I don't know what else to say. Those are the highlights. It's a quick rundown. It's fab. It, no, it's it, fabulous. Yeah, it's really. been a, I mean, it's been a good ride and I'm still <laughs> enjoying it. I mean, you're just really getting started, you know, it's, Seriously, you know, you've got a, a beautiful you know, future ahead of you. Speaking of which, kind of move over a little bit so we can see these gorgeous photographs. Oh, Look yeah. So wow. A Look at that. Of, uh, this is a coyote I see in the park quite a bit. What's the bottom one? Is that a leopard? Can't tell. That bottom? Oh, that's, that's still a coyote. That's a coyote it's on the right bottom? Right over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Wow. A funny. very healthy coyote. And I'm, Apparently, yeah. So you're on the outskirts of, of Los Angeles, right? Yeah. And I, yes, Yellowstone coyotes look quite a bit healthier than LA coyotes. I mean, from Zoom, right? I, as I'm looking at it, it was a little hard to see. But and then mm -hmm. at the top, is that also at the very top? Is that a coyote too? That is, yep. So all of these right behind me are coyotes. Wow, look at that. Um, this is actually all of one individual coyote that I've followed for the last four years. Interesting old animal. He, um, He's overcome a leg injury and a leg injury that should have killed him. And he's still going strong. So he's kind of an inspiring critter to yeah. see. To watch that, right? To watch that over time. Yeah. Yeah. Smart as heck. Um, but yeah, so when a lot of my clients that come to the park, when they see coyotes, they think they're wolves because the coyotes in Yellowstone are large, healthy animals. They do not look like your typical city coyote. Or yeah, anything. they're skinny and scrawny. and Right. Yeah. No, no, this, these things, they're, they're large. They're, you know, like German shepherd size. Oh, healthy critters. That's a good comparison. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. get that. So well done in orchestrating your life. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, and I, <laughs> I mean, it took a lot of help from other people and I'm, I've been given a lot of great opportunities. So I don't want to say I, I, there was some luck involved, but I've, I've done my best to, to move the pieces in the right direction. Yeah. Look, you know, and you know, from what you know of, of me that you are following again, you know, your intuition, you are following your gut instinct. You are listening to what brought you joy. You are listening to what your passion is. That's also universal law, meaning, you know, you're not alone in this, <laughs> right? You're not alone in this and you were connected. <laughs> right mm -hmm. we're partnering with that whatever you want to call that and that's what i mean is you you orchestrated it beautifully by partnering with what the senses were telling you right okay i love it it's really and, fascinating hmm? yeah i think we've said before but i just want to emphasize it that for me personally fulfillment and meaning has just always been something that is so critical to my life I, I just have to have it. I feel like life is so short. If you don't have that meaning, I just don't know what you're doing. So for me personally, I just, I can't live my life any other way. Yeah. I, I'm very much, I've only got so much time here. Mm -hmm. I want to do it. I want to live it doing what gives me joy and gives me meaning. And mm -hmm. I have never been shy about pursuing that. Therein lies why you're on this podcast <laughs> is because, you know, I'm here to inspire mm -hmm. people, right? And that was very apparent, you know, when I first met you. And then as I got to know you in our, you know, previous calls that, 
here's a guy that really cares about, again, the meaning of life and doing a con in other words, being very conscious mm -hmm. of what you're doing is, you know, the right thing. It's the meaningful. It's, you're not just a robot. You're not just somebody that's doing something just to get it done. Anyway, it's very inspiring. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I, um, I, I really, really appreciate that. I hope that I can inspire people, can inspire my students because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a lot of students asking about what they should do. And there's, there's complex answers. You have to be realistic about like, well, what, how can you support yourself? But my answer always is going to come back to, to meaning and joy because mm -hmm. you yep. got to have that in there. That's right. That is absolutely right. So speaking of that, what brings you the most joy in doing your and when I say your business, you know, let's let's talk about the photography business. We know the teaching is, you know, phenomenal for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what brings you the most joy in your photography? It's 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 kind of a two part answer, and it is not necessarily the easiest to put to words, at least not the first part. The <laughs> first part is, is that I am just so fascinated and entranced by and in love with the natural world and have been for as long as I can remember mm -hmm. that I simply find joy in being able to witness the natural world kind of tick to its own rhythms. I, and I, I could, I could list a thousand things. Like I love the silence of winter mm -hmm. where there's true silence out in the snow and you're watching some wolf traips across a valley I love the hustle and bustle and the noise of spring when all these birds come back to the park and your senses are just kind of a light. I am just absolutely enthralled with the ability to see there's so much of the world that's not human. There, there's so, so much of it that's not human. And for most of the Earth's history, humans weren't even a consideration. And so much of our life is just human, but there's so much more out there that is just so ancient and beautiful. And I can't <laughs> describe it better than that. But I've told people before, um, if I have a real religion, it's out there. Like that is spiritual for me, for lack of a better word. I, it's just, it really is. It's like you're brushing up against something bigger, more important. Mm -hmm. um, so that aspect is the selfish part, I suppose. Just, I mean, I just love experiencing it. And and people have those types of um, spiritual experiences and in, in doing different things in their life. For me, that is it. And it's, it's absolutely not even close. Mm -hmm. Like that is the place I find that. Mm -hmm. Then the second part though is because I love it so much and because it's so meaningful to me, I also find a great deal of joy in sharing that with others and hence the guiding business. Um, I love, so I love sharing it with others, even if it's just through the photography. So every time I take a good photo, I'm instantly like texting it to my friends and to my family. I want them to share in this experience, you know, yeah. but then that love of sharing it really brought me into the idea of, of guiding where I can really take people out there and it's not showing them a photo. It's like, they're getting to experience it. And I love doing that because you just see people so often that, you can see, oh man, they get it. Like they, they're really experiencing it the same way. Like I did the first few times I was out there and to see them not only get to have that, but to know that for many people, this is something that will change them and their attitude towards life from there on out. That's absolutely spectacular. Uh, and then the last thing I do that really brings me a lot of joy because, you know, we've mentioned my teaching and I'm a just, I'm a teacher at heart. My parents were teachers and I think I inherited that um, is that when I do my photo tours, I'm also teaching people how to take the photo mm -hmm. um, and I'm teaching about the wildlife. So, so I might have an experienced photographer come out with me, but they don't know the park like I do, like mm -hmm. Yellowstone and surrounding areas. And so I'm teaching them about well, this is where the wildlife typically are, and this is how they tend to move throughout the day. And here's some areas to know about within the park so that you get you can get the most out of any other time you come. 
um, here's what the animals are like here. So I get to do that teaching. I'm always teaching people about the behavior and the ecology of the animals. And then I also get people who maybe aren't as experienced in photography and I'm teaching them not only here's the animals and here's how to predict their behavior, but also here's the settings you want and here's how you're going to frame the shot. And here, how, here's how you're going to set yourself up nice. so that after they experience it, they also get something that they get to take with them, that photograph, that kind of like um, piece of it, you know, mm -hmm. a photograph is like freezing time or freezing a moment that you can then carry with you. And so they get to have that as well. So I find a ton of joy in that getting to bring other people to have those experiences, but then also teaching them about the place that I love so much and teaching them about how to do the same things I do, take mm -hmm. those photographs and have that, that they can take back with them. Mm. So talk a little bit more about these wonderful photo tours. How long are they? How frequent are you doing them? Oh, during the academic year, I do them on weekends. And then during the summers, I do them a lot more frequently. And of course, that's when most more people come mm -hmm. uh, anyways is in the summer. Okay. Then the tours are because it's it's photo it's photography based. It's it's all about you want to get the best photograph and mm -hmm. any other photograph uh, photographer who does wildlife will know why I say this. It starts early. It's going it, to, it'll start typically at sunrise because those morning hours, those can be the most amazing hours for wildlife. Animals are much more active in those morning hours. Okay. The lighting is just right. You yeah. get this beautiful golden light filtering through the trees coming over the hills. Everything is just gorgeous. So that this, it's just an unbeatable time of day. If you mm -hmm. want to see animals and want to photograph animals and want to get them in the, the most just incredible light. Mm -hmm. um, and then tours will go for eight hours is generally about that kind of depends on what we see. You know, okay. if we're, if we're not finding as much might go a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And then some people also will get an additional few hours in the evening because same thing animals are more active in the evening towards yeah. sunset and the lighting is better because you get again that beautiful color of sunset mm -hmm. that golden orange light a lot of photographers call this even uh this evening hour near sunset golden hour yeah. and it's golden not only because the light is golden it's golden because that's when you get the most incredible photographs yeah so, so these are one day tours larry these are just one depends day. on the client. Many people get a day and then some people want multiple days. Okay. I always tell people that if you have the time, mm -hmm. of course you want to do multiple days because wildlife is unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And the more days you give yourself, the more you up the chances that something incredible will happen. You know, we can, I, I know where to find certain animals. I mean, like I know where to find literally individual animals that like there's a fox I've been watching her for years. I know the route she's going to walk most mornings and where she hunts or wow. there's, you know, like I know the animals as well as anyone yeah. can, yeah. Um, but they're still animals. So they can still change their habits. Sure. They, they often follow routines, but they can be off for a day. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got more time, you up your odds that we're going to get those things just right. And you also up your odds that we get some of the unexpected the incredible things that just spontaneously happen. Yeah. Uh, but yes, they can be a day. They can be multiple days, completely up to the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, during the summer, I do long blocks of tours and, and people can book for as, as long as they want, really. So what was what's the longest you've had a client book with you for a, a photo tour? Well, I've actually got some... I'm going to go with I've got some clients right now mm -hmm. that we're trying to figure out their dates exactly, get it all nailed down, but they're coming sometime in May or June. Okay. And they're talking about doing four days straight. Wow. And, and that's, that's pretty good, you know, because a lot of people, they come to the park, they've only got maybe a few days and oh. we're going to spend those four days dedicated just to the wildlife photography, mm -hmm. uh, which of course I'm going to have a blast. And yeah. I, I, I know that the time of year they're coming, we're going to see some good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to get them out there and, mm -hmm. and help them photograph this stuff and give them those things to take home. Um, a lot of people do one day, but yeah, this four day tour will be a lot of fun too. Oh, that's so terrific. And I know you really did quite, everybody, you got to hear this. I mean, it's you know, being a business coach, I can't help, but you know, <clears throat> share this. Um, 
this was, if I'm correct, the travel show was your first big travel show, correct? Yes, it was the first travel show I'd ever ever did, right? ever done at all. Here's an example of when you know you're in the right slot, even though you always know you are, right, based on everything you've just heard. I mean, Larry literally sold many, many tours at the first show he's been at. I sold quite a few tours, got a lot of interest. And mm -hmm. ever since the, that's been about two weeks ago or so now, hasn't it? It's been yeah. a while. Yeah, it was February and, 3rd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm I'm getting emails every day because I think I told you too, I know I gave out, it must have been like 500 business cards. Wow. Like people would just take them. And I, I printed up some postcards that had little bits of okay. my photography on it as well. Yeah. Uh, and so I've been getting emails just every day about people like, okay, we're, we want to come. What's a good time of year? Or what are the dates that are available? So and wonderful. So it's it's one of those things that I think is going to pay dividends for a long time, which again is great. I had I had no expectations, as you said. I had never done a show. I yeah. had no idea what I was doing. I just I was just showing up and like, hey, here's some photographs, and Woo! I'd love to take you on a trip. What? How does that sound? And um, that went really well. Well, there's there's nothing more, you know, humbly validating that when you, you know, are doing what you love and then the public loves what you're doing, that you're like, okay, this is kind of a dream life. <laughs> That's true. I think right? uh, I do like to tell people that if <laughs> no one liked my photography, I would still be doing it the exact same way. Of course, you bet. But it is, it's so fun when you meet so many other people that, like you said, they validate because they're like, oh, this is incredible. And how did you see this? Like, yeah. how does this even happen with some of the shots that I get? Yeah. Um, it is nice to hear that. And of course, what I found easy about the show was because I had, was displaying some of my photography mm -hmm. uh, was that people just wanted to hear about the animals. And that's easy. I can talk about those stories all day because- for me, every photograph is not just a photograph. It's a story. It's a right. memory. Like, That's right. There is something behind it. And I can I can talk about that stuff all day long. That's fabulous. And so those that are listening and who are interested, mm -hmm. they can go to your website. And I'll have all that in the show notes, your link. But what's the website that... Uh, montanawildphoto.com there it is montanawildphoto.com right easy, easy to remember and there uh, people can see some of my photography they can buy prints and of course importantly they can buy guided tours well that's where go go buy the photographs <laughs> everybody go book some tours so the guy's booked out for the full year fabulous okay let's move into talking a little bit more about intuition and gut and I call gut and heart instinct. Mm -hmm. So give us a, a story of where you, and I know you've kind of already done that. I think your entire life is this, <laughs> <laughs> but I, <laughs> but let's take an excerpt out of your life where you followed your intuition, right? And it led to a joyful, fulfilling result. Like I said, your entire life is kind of the result, but <laughs> <laughs> let's, yeah, let's share a story. Um, you know, you're not wrong. I have followed my gut a lot. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that, that's something I, I do value about my approach to life. I've, I've, I think the big one that immediately comes to mind, I, we kind of touched on, but was when I finished my PhD and had job options in multiple places. And the two that I came down really to was this one that I took and another one um, in the Salt Lake City area which would have been a great institution, a great university, would have loved it, loved the people there. I uh, think I would have liked, you know, there's mountains nearby. I think I could have liked living there, but mm -hmm. choosing to follow my gut, because my gut said Montana. The other, the other position was maybe a bit more secure. It was financially more lucrative and it had a lot of perks. You know, big, big university, lots of resources, all this stuff. Yep. But man, my gut said Montana. And I don't think I told you either. Uh, I got to go visit the university. So I knew very much like this is what it is like. These are the people. During 
the interview with the college I'm at now, I had to do it all via Zoom because COVID was going on. And so people were starting to restrict a little bit. Right. And so I had never seen this place when I followed my gut nonetheless and took this position just because my all of it, like you were saying, my heart, my intuition, my gut was saying, you have to go to Montana. Right. Like this is your chance. This is what you've been dreaming of your yeah. life what you've been working at for the last five years to put yourself in a position where you can go do this and followed my gut here. It took me a day to immediately know, yes, this was the right decision. Yeah. And then about a few months after that, after I kind of got settled and I got okay with my position and, and teaching classes, that's when I started to think about, okay, now let's do that childhood thing. And let's dig that dream back up. <laughs> yeah. Um, started visiting Yellowstone and other areas, Glacier National Park, other wilderness areas in between. Mm -hmm. Got some better camera gear, especially a lens. Mm -hmm. And oh man, I I mean mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not kidding you. The the first time I took that new camera gear into the park mm -hmm. and started taking photographs <laughs> was like flipping a switch where it was absolute, I mean, I was absolutely just ridiculous childhood like joy, you know, yeah. Yeah. I was having the absolute time of my life and I still am. Mm -hmm. And th there are, if, if this can give any like indication, you know, there are days in the park where I can be in the park all day taking incredible photographs, photographs that I never in a million years could have taken for the first several decades of my life. Mm -hmm. And the, the light's fading, you know, the sun is over the hills, it's past sunset, it's really too low of a light to um, continue taking photographs or to continue taking good photographs. Mm -hmm. And yet I'll see an animal that's like, it's too far away, it's too dim, and I don't care, I will still just like walk out and take more photographs because I just love doing it so much. Mm -hmm. And I so much value that I am getting to see these things now that I just dreamed of seeing when I was a kid and dreamed of seeing when I was a teenager and dreamed of seeing when I was a young adult. Mm -hmm. And I just know that like, I never know how many moments like this I'm going to get. Right. So it can be some lone wolf that's super far away and the lighting is bad or a coyote walking across a field or a bison coming up over a rise or whatever it is. And if there's a shred of light left, I'm still out there taking the photographs because I just mm -hmm. love doing it. And then from there, eventually built the guiding business, allowing people to do the same thing and teaching them how to do the same thing. Yeah. So I didn't mean to get off the rails, but when you're yeah, like, what's a point where I followed my intuition, yep. I'm just emphasizing that I followed my gut here to Montana and mm -hmm. to the, to the back door of Yellowstone essentially. Yeah. And I absolutely cannot imagine my life being somewhere else at this point. I can't either. <laughs> you know, I'm th I'm thinking about you know the the point in time when you had you know the big university as an option, mm -hmm. and you had this smaller you know college in Montana, and it was really going back to your values. It's what was more meaningful to you, right? Oh, yeah. Besides it being an absolute yes in your intuition and your gut instinct that's a really true decision, right? Instead of going for, like you said, yeah, the, you know, income would have been bigger and there, you know, more benefits and the big university and the, you know, all that stuff. More prestige. More prestige yeah. and all. But it's I think like, a lot of no. people taste. Yeah. You, it's like, you are not going to betray your joy. Absolutely. Right. right. That's really what it's about. And I just think that's so, you know, admirable. Really, and and you're it's all because I mean, come on, we're here to do the best we can to be happy, right? Nobody want, likes to obviously live a miserable life. Right. <laughs> you have something to do with it, and there are ways to yes, follow your joy. Mm -hmm. right? You, it's again, it's not just this nice thing to do. It's literally a life strategy. That's why I'm doing this. Right. It's a life strategy when you honor that. You honor what you love to do. And most of the time, and I know this is a generalized statement, you can monetize that. 
All right. Most of the time. All right. Most of the time. It's going to be some things you have to kind of maybe do two or three things while you're building that one thing mm -hmm. up, but that's okay. So right. fabulous. It's just great, great story on that. So, all right. So to kind of bring this to a, you know, a nice finish is based on your experience, right? What key advice, and I know you have a lot you know, <laughs> to offer, but let's kind of narrow it down yeah. to a couple things. What key advice can you give to my creatives that are listening to us? Based on my life, I would say, again, chase after meaning. Mm -hmm. Follow your intuition. Mm -hmm. And chase after that meaning and that fulfillment in life because mm -hmm. life is short. Life is fragile. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of people who chase other things and maybe it works out. It often doesn't. There are plenty of people who chase just finances or prestige or what other people thought they should do. And they can still have a happy life, but I don't think they're going to have the meaningful life that they could have. So I would just say chase meaning. And you're right, Marla, when you said earlier, you know, you might have to juggle several things at once to make it work sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if your life does not have meaning, I just don't, I, I don't know what you're chasing. So chase after meaning, even if it sounds crazy. And I don't think that you'll ever be disappointed if you're doing what you find meaningful and what you find joyful and what brings you fulfillment. Well said. <laughs> well said. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Terrific. So where again can people then get in touch with you? Where can we find you other than your website? Yep. Uh well the website's great. And then I'm also on Instagram. I am Taylor Nature Photography there. Okay. Um Taylor.nature.photography, I should say. Okay. And I I'm pretty good about, you know, on, on Instagram, I check messages pretty frequently. I have a lot of people reach out to me. I've had a lot of clients that found me on Instagram That's right. and I'll be happy to respond to anyone who reaches out. Yeah. I know that's how I reached out to you initially. That's right. Yeah. It, you know, other than the, I think the email that I had, but I, you know, I think the next day I went onto your Instagram and DM'd you or put, mm -hmm. did something, yep. made some sort of comment. I'm like, okay, this guy's pretty active on your so yes, it'll be down in the show notes, um, your link to Instagram. So go visit Larry, Dr. Taylor, <laughs> uh, with his, and you'll find lots of different animals. There's definitely, right, there's definitely the coyotes, but there's a beautiful fox. Right? Oh, yeah. Fox, that one. fox, wolves, uh, bison, grizzlies, yeah. black bears, birds of all sorts, otters, incredible all kinds of good stuff i mean anything that oh ermine i mean one of my most famous shots is an ermine mm, oh yeah the white one remember that one yeah the white yeah. one <laughs> <laughs> the one that's straddling the rock right yes yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's doing a um in climbing lingo that's an actual move i think it's called chimneying where it's it's got its hands on both sides of the the rock crack okay very good yeah you can see that everybody if you go to his definitely go to his Instagram. It's very, I mean, you could just sit there for a good, you know, 10, 15 minutes, just looking through all the photographs. Beautiful. Well, I appreciate it. Very good. So thank you for being Absolutely. here with us. Uh, thank you and, for having me. Mm -hmm, of course, my pleasure. So my dear friends, you know, it's my experience and belief that your sixth sense, it, your intuition is really your first sense. Right. I think somebody, whoever figured this out, had it incorrect. <laughs> the first sense is intuition and then everything else follows sight, feel, right, hearing, et cetera. So reason being is you follow your intuition and, you know, Dr. Taylor is a great example of you're going to live your best life when you do that. Right. This is why I love doing this is. It is proof in the pudding, right? When you follow your intuition, uh, it's telling you you're on the right path, following your joy. And you want to deepen your intuition at work, which I find is an interesting uh, quandary with a lot of my clients is they want to learn, my, in fact, my current 
uh, cohort with my wonderful women uh, entrepreneurs, they're like, I'm good at when I'm with my family, my kids outside, but when I'm working, I, I got to figure out how to get this intuition going. My point is, let's talk. You can go, there's a Calendly link in the show notes. Let's have a 30 minute call. Let's talk a little bit more about that and how you can literally integrate all of who you are, which is that intuition and have it work for you during work, right? It's because yes, I know you have to be sometimes quiet to listen to it. That's the whole point. I have all different types of strategies in which you can do that and learn how to really be connected to it probably in the least obvious place and probably the most challenging place, which is in the middle of work. Because once you recalibrate and you understand how to listen, feel that intuition while you're working, it becomes literally a normal for you and you don't even have to think about it. You just feel it, all right? So yes, go ahead and book a call uh, using my Calendly link. And uh, yeah, let's help you listen to that intuition more. So very good. Uh, until next episode, uh, be well and be blessed. And I'll see you online. Take care, everyone. Hey, thanks for listening. You can find more entrepreneurial stories and resources at MarlaDiane.com. And while you're there, enjoy my free downloads to up-level your business and your life. And Instagram, it's my favorite place to hang out. Let's connect there. If you received inspiration from the episode, I'd sure appreciate a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. Until next episode, take care.